Good day. Today's uh, clip is being shot under adverse conditions, so if you hear the odd crack of thunder in the background, well, that's what's happening. Um, but what I'm making up today is a device which I'm hoping will help me machine pockets and things a bit more precisely. The, the mill I've got has got um, trip dogs, which you set and, and they'll knock the feed out when they get to that particular position. But at the moment, there isn't any good way of setting those things so it goes up to a precise position. Or you can say, I want a pocket that's going to be 101.4 millimetres long and it'll trip when it gets to 104.1 millimetres. Now, most of the time, that's not a problem. But uh, it, it is one of those things that it would be a nice occasion to be able to say, right, I'll set up the mill for a pocket of this length and uh, everything will be wonderful. So I was going through eBay the other day, as you do, not wanting to buy anything, and uh, I saw a, a, um, a piece which uh, um, was, would, would come in very handy for that. So I put a bid in, quite surprised when I bought it. Um, I think it was because it was metric in, a, in a, uh, an imperial country, and so no one wanted it. But uh, that should be arriving soon, and when that arrives, I'll be able to in integrate that into to what I'm doing. But first of all, I need to make up some uh, dogs for the, the mill here, uh, so that they can uh, take this thing. These are the original ones on the mill, and they're nothing, nothing too special. Um, They've got a key on the back to, to locate into the groove, they bolt on, and when that runs over the, um, the um, whatever you call that, trippy thing on the, on the feed, uh, that knocks that down, disengages the feed and everything works. So, at the moment it's been, we've had thunderstorms and all sorts here, so um, making videos in that makes it uh, even more challenging. So, I've started duplicating the, uh, the trip dogs. I want something that's just a little bit wider. So I've got that profile done and, I've, and, and that all fits in the, in the groove quite nicely. Uh, I'll now slice that off and dress that back, probably about 35 long I think, these are only about 30, and that should just um, do that nicely. One trick worth knowing is um, this one. Here I've got a a part, it's, I've, I've scribed the line as to where I want the, the cut to be. It's not critical, uh, it's about 20 degrees. But um, I, could, I could do this by setting up with a protractor and all that sort of thing, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a parallel and I'm going to line that up like so. This is rather tricky to do because I haven't got enough hands for it. But what that means is I can then come to machine down to that, that, par that line which is parallel with my, my jaw. I can zero off the, the parallel and know that I'm coming down to that, that same um, um, you know, scribe line. And that's all without having to worry about protractors and all that sort of thing. So it's a handy trick to have if you've got some angles to cut which don't need to be precise uh, and you've got something that you can, you can scribe them out on. Um, that's one way to set them up and that just gives me uh, What's that, a, a 3 16th? 1 8th, 1 8th parallel, so that gives me 1 8th clearance above my vice jaw that I can just come in and, and machine that. I'm making a whole bunch of uh, small parts, there's nothing terribly exciting about them. Um, you know, they're usually rectangular and they've got a couple of holes in them. However, this one here, uh, I want to put a 5mm rod in there. Now, I haven't got a 5mm reamer that I can use on that. But uh, an interesting little bodge that I've come up with or, or come across is if you drill that out with a, I mean that's five millimetres, say a, a, a four, four and a half mil drill, and then get a, a, a sharp five millimetre and run that down, and you'll need to do this on a mill because you need to, to, to lock everything up so that the centres are uh, correct. That's a, uh, a 196 uh, diamond thou dial pin, and that goes in quite uh, smoothly. Uh, this one is uh, a 197, which is just a smidge over five millimetre and it, it goes in but it's a bit of a grind and it's a bit of a, um, a, a tight fit. So um, yeah, that will give you a, um, an on-size hole if, you, if you're ever stuck without a reamer. I'm using a, um, a cutter to put a, a, a rounded edge on here. I'm going to turn it around and do these two as well. Um, but one thing with using this type of cutter is that it's a good idea to 
do two passes. One pass with the, the, the corners, you know, half a millimetre or so off the, um, the, the material you're cutting, or maybe even a millimetre, you know, somewhere in there, but basically something to take the corner off so you can then come back with a finished pass which is going to be reasonably close. Uh, this tip was actually taught to me by a, um, a woodworker uh, in, in relation to um, uh, woodworking routers because if you run those two uh, or try to do a too deep a de depth of cut on those you, you can burn the timber so to preserve your cutter and to preserve your, your material um, you know that was that was his uh, answer and uh, it, it, it works. To secure the base of the uh, depth gauge onto my arms um, I'm going to use a I guess you'd call it a, a shoulder thumb screw this is, a, this is a shoulder bolt and I'm using a couple of those as pivots uh, and they're used a lot by tool makers, you have to buy them at specialty fastener shops but you've got a, an accurately ground to diameter and length section in there, threaded part there and a head and so you can use those uh, as I'm doing here for a pivot and so that's 25 long and so I've got, I've got my, the piece that pivots on that is, is 24.9 and uh, so I've got just a little bit of, of, of pivot there. But what I want to do here is have a, a, a slight shoulder. Now as I've done in my knobs video what I'm going to do is tap the center of that and put in a, a, an M4 grub screw. That section there is going to be just um, standoff and then this section here I'll uh, take down to diameter 5. I've started with knurling because that's probably the most aggressive operation that I'll do and so I just put the knurls on. Um, usually when I knurl something I'll, I'll just run a file lightly across the top after I finish the knurling because that takes off the sharp edges uh, and then I'll put a, a chamfer on the corners and that takes off the sharp edges there. I'll probably once I've got this off the lay then uh, take this over to the wire wheel and give it a bit more of a brush to, to, to knock some of the other burrs off. I've drilled and tapped the centre of my shoulder bolt here. I've put the grub screw in there. Uh, I need to remember to take that when I part off. But I put the grub screw in there just so that I've got something to push against when I'm taking this down. Otherwise I've got a diameter 5 uh, OD and an M4 tapped ID and I do run the risk of crushing it. So if I do it like this um, I'm hoping I can get down to that diameter without any dramas. Then I'll uh, take the, the, the grub screw out, part off, um, put the grub screw back in with a bit of uh, Loctite or something like that and um, uh, probably face the, the, the back uh, off just to, just to nice, make it nice and neat uh, and uh, off I go. I've made up here a crude version of uh, what's referred to as a diamond pin uh, and if you look at it in, in cross section there it's sort of four sides of a hexagon um, with the top and bottoms here left un untouched. Now this is diameter 5 bar, uh, across that those points it now measures uh, about 4.7 something like 4.8 um, but the idea behind one of these is that if you have a, a, a tight hole like that and you've constrained this one which is what I've done with my um, uh, shoulder screw here then getting things lined up that way might be a problem but I can swing that way so what the diamond pin allows is for accurate location that way but it's got that slight bit of clearance that way so you can live with a little bit of misalignment if, if uh, that's what you've got so I'm about to throw this into the lathe and I'll just put a chamfer on there so I can get it on a little bit more easily and, and take it to size but that way I've got you know, if we're talking degrees of freedom, um, that's clamped down, so it's not moving that way, it's not moving that way, it's not moving that way. Um, it can't rotate that way, it can move that way, and so by having a diamond pin there, I can, I can arrest that so that this is constrained in all, all six degrees of freedom. Well, after lots of machining, here we are. Uh, I've got my uh, dogs mounted, uh, and they've got a hole on the top. In the top of that goes a piece like so and that's just to give a little bit of swivel to, so um, all my uh, movement is that way there's no sideways bending forces or anything like that which might jam things up and all that sort of stuff um, into there using my uh, using a shoulder bolt 
I've got this piece here. Now I'm still setting this up so um, there'll be a little bit of, of mucking around here. Now onto this piece goes a, a, the, a clamp which I've already attached to the end of the, uh, the depth gauge here. Uh, a confession to all you uh, purists, I had to put a small uh, dimple in the, in the back of the beam here um, just so that the grub screw has something repeatable to grab onto but uh, it's still usable as a depth gauge and uh, if I didn't confess on uh, global uh, internet no one would ever know. So. Um, this piece similarly goes here, unscrew that, right, now that goes somewhere around there, I need to get a, a clamp to hold that there, what I want to do is just run this back and forth, see where it stops, dial up that, that measurement and uh, fingers crossed, um, you know, calibrate things. Right, I've just travelled this between stops, the DRO says it's 64.6, I set 64.6 on my dial here and then it's a matter of just, I've, I've clamped this for the moment but I'll need to um, scribe some lines. I was going to weld this on but I think I'll have actually have a, a, a slot and some screws so I can just get a little bit of adjustment in case I need to, to fine tune it. But what this should do is um, allow me to, if, if I wanted to set this to say um, 70, I can loosen this off Feed down to 70, tighten that up, and that should give me 70 millimeters. I set this up for, for 70, and coming over here, the DRO is telling me 69.89, so 69.9. So I'm happy with that, certainly within 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a millimetre, it gives me the ability to adjust the length of travel. Now, one of the reasons for the pins on here too was that once I'd set it, I can take that off. So I'm not going to run into my um, DRO pickup or anything like that. So, uh, you know, that's as well as giving me those degrees of freedom. That's, that's part of the plan too. So I hope this has been of interest. Um, it's the sort of thing that I think you could probably put on, on pretty much any mill that's got uh, dogs on there, but uh, just one way of, of getting a more precise um, you know, position. Um, one of the things you could do perhaps was, okay, you know, you want to start a slot that's a certain distance from that edge so you can run it in there, see what the difference is, adjust this up, and then use the dog to, to, to stop. So, uh, there you go. See you for the next one.